हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अभिपीडिया पावर्ड बाय अभिमन्यु आई दिस इज ट्वेंटी थर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक वैल्यू डिशन सीरीज विद डॉक्टर विवेक राना एंड टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज लेक्चर इज वंस अगेन फ्रॉम बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सेक्शन If you could recall in our last lecture, I had covered how Philippines has given go ahead to the golden rice project. Now there is another good news for biotech, or you could say GM crops porters. Nigeria has approved commercial uh, planting of the GM cowpea. So in this lecture, I will be discussing what is the significance of this project, what are the likely ramification, what are the scientific basis, how this cowpea is different from the normal. Gaupi, which is grown in different parts of the world, and what are the additional themes which you should cover from GS perspective, and like always, a practice question to brush up your facts as well as your uh, make you acclimatize with the pre preparation. So let's start with today's lecture on GM Gaupi. So first of all, whenever some GM crop is developed, there are certain key areas on which you should focus on, like what are the crop name is, what is the gene which it is carrying, carrying a gene from some other species. So what is that species is, what are the chief characteristic features which makes it unique from the naturally grown cowpea or other any GM crop, and finally, what is the overall significance of this step. For bird as well as that country which has given it a green signal. So first of all, the name is they have given to this particular crop is Sam P20. I have written it for you. So just like our own GM mustard was named Thara Mustard Hybrid 11, they have also given a familiar name Sam P20 T, so that it could be easily differentiated from the naturally grown crop. Now. in this development uh, has a lot of international collaboration it was not possible for a developing country to develop this crop of its own so it has a large network of organizations which have come into play i'll be just naming them the first is the african agricultural technology foundation which has tied up with cicero cicero you have to understand is commonwealth scientific industrial research organization of australia so this is a major uh, organization which has played a key role in bringing this crop to nigeria and also donald danforth the plant science center in us so these were the three organizations which have spearheaded this movement and even though you know, upsc examiner is not likely to ask this you should be familiar that it's not totally indigenous thing it has taken help from us australia then coming to the characteristic part since it's a gm crop it must be having certain unique traits which make it quite different from the conventional crop so just like we had covered bt series bt crops this also is on similar grounds the crop has inborn pest resistance since there is a common pest called cowpea pod borer so this is a major pest in north western africa which is responsible for large scale destruction of this crop the scientific name is maruka vitrata once again i have written the spelling maruka vitrata this is the scientific name of the pest and apart from that it also had additional advantage for notorious uh, weeds parasitic weeds which also grow it is also resistant to that which are scientifically known as uh, striga and electra i have also highlighted this parasitic so this is the scientific part on which you should focus on that overall it's a pest resistance as well as the additional advantage of being resistant to the parasitic weeds because these are the main reasons why we cannot achieve the optimum yield which is possible and as the population rises we need to have a certain standard of yield which can be achieved through such scientific intervention now coming to uh, let's go little dwell more what are the intricacies since uh, some there must be some gene which has been used uh, for this pest resistance if once again the similar one cry 1ab now this gene is also used in bt cotton as well as other bt crops so in case we have followed that theme deeply so this word should not be a new uh, for you so this is cry 1 ab gene which is it is carrying and once again this gene has been isolated from bacillus thuringiensis 
this is a soil bacteria which carries a gene and which is responsible for producing a protein which is lethal for this spot bearer insect. So this is what the scientific basis of this GM cow pea is. Now what is the significance? Now significance of this whole project, the scientific intervention, we are going against nature, this is a likely criticism which we uh, all GM crops face is that this is the second crop to be approved in Nigeria uh, in GM series. The first one was uh, BT cotton but uh, BT cotton as we all know is a fiber crop. So this is the first ever food crop to be approved in Ni Nigeria. So Nigeria has taken a lead and likely not this up and Burkina Faso, Niger, Ghana, these are the likely countries where you will see this crop to be approved and introduced because this cowpea is the staple food of Nigeria. Almost 200 million people are dependent for it for the rich protein content which it gives. So this project attains quite significance in that respect because uh, even though Nigeria is one of the largest producer of cowpea in the world, still it has to import almost 5 lakh tons of this cowpea. Why? Because almost 80 to 90 percent which they were growing was being destroyed by this typical pest pod bearer Maruka vitrata. So the Maruka pod bearer was causing large scale destruction. Now since you have given that inbuilt resistance the co-op yield is likely to achieve the targets which are set and that's what makes this project a quite significant and also in most of the African continent majority of countries are wary of this biotechnological intervention and there is not acceptability of this. So once a key country adopts it other countries uh, are likely to uh, level and more countries are likely to accept GM crops in total because developing world is facing food crisis we have to look up to that already must have seen the locust attack how it threatened the food security of the uh, horn of Africa so such scientific intervention at times help to tide over such crisis so this is a major milestone for Africa and for world as well that food crop is finally being accepted now what are the additional themes which you should cover like we always give you key insights because whenever some current topic is ongoing you should not just limit your knowledge to that specific information which we have discussed you should do a 360 degree follow up of the themes first of all since the bacillus thuringiensis genesis is in news so all bt crops you should follow like in india also the first ever food crop to be approved in 2002 was bt cotton and after that, BT Brinjal also got GEAC clearance, but eventually Agriculture and Environment Ministry didn't give it a go ahead. So make sure you are aware of the other BT crops, like there is BT corn, there is BT Brinjal, there is BT cotton. Then the technology behind this intervention, RDT, recombinant DNA technology, basics should be covered. That how a gene is isolated from one species and it's made to implant in another biodiverse species so that it has carries additional trait which is normally not present in that organism. So basics of RDT technology, genetic engineering should be brushed up once again because at times they will give you that the technology behind some crops and you have to match the gene editing, gene therapy and you should be familiar whenever two different species uh, are used for production of some unique or novel organism, RDT is the ideal thing. So this is what all is and from mains point of view you should brush up your knowledge how biotechnology is helping in agriculture sector because this is one of the steps by which biotechnology is contributing to agriculture so mains themes can be asked how what's the role of biotechnology what's the role of genetic engineering or to be matter of fact RDT in the ongoing food movement. So this is what we had to cover in this lecture. Now a practice question and I have framed once again of on familiar lines. Uh, I matched the technology with the, the novel organism or the crop. So we have to pick the incorrectly matched pair among the following. The first one you know BT series is produced as, as I have discussed by RDT, recombinant DNA technology because normal cotton plant carries cry one ab gene which is isolated from bacillus thuringiensis and it provides pest resistance against bollworm. Bollworm, pink bollworm is the main pest which is uh, responsible for destruction. Then the 
in coming to healthcare sector, color blindness and hemophilia. These are genetic disorders. So gene therapy is use of genetic intervention to correct these abnormal inherited disorders. So yes, color blindness can be treated with the gene therapy. Had it been night blindness, then that the nutritional deficiency can be used with the golden rice. That's the another thing. Then coming to oil zapper. Oil zapper is a scientific biotech tool which is used for degradation of harmful hydrocarbons. Whenever there is an oil spill in some ocean or sea, such biotech tool comes in handy and it's produced by genetic engineering. Bacteria are modified so that they can break down complex hydrocarbons to make it less harmful for the environment. So all three options are correct, so we have to pick the D option. None of them is incorrectly matched. So this is what I had for this lecture. I hope this session was useful. Thank you very much. I'll be back soon with another Science and Tech Value Edition series.